Recently Procreate added layer masks, so I thought it'd be fun to walk you through how I use them in my artwork. Let's start at the very beginning. What exactly is a layer mask and how does it work? Well, think of it this way. If you're painting a room or a painting, you might use masking tape or painter's tape to cover up a portion of your art that you don't want to be covered with paint. And what do you have left when your paint dries and you remove the masking tape? Well, you have some nice crisp lines where the tape used to be. Masking in Procreate or any painting program works pretty much the same way. If you create a mask, you're actually masking out that area where you won't see the paint below it. This is great because unlike erasing, it doesn't actually actually damage the image below. So let's apply it to a drawing. So here's our drawing. Basically right now, it's just a bunch of flat colors. If I was normally gonna shade this in, usually with my style, it's just flat color. So I'd, I'd take it and I'd draw in some darker shadows in some of the places and I'd, and I'd add depth there. It's fairly flat, but I thought today, I wanna try something a little bit different. I wanna add some textures and I wanna use masks. I was thinking for a texture, maybe a nice newspaper texture would be something interesting and different. So I grabbed my copy of the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the 13th best newspaper in the country. And once I find a nice texture in the newspaper, what I wanna do is I wanna hit my wrench and I wanna go to take a photo. And right here on my iPad, I could just take a photo of the newspaper and I just get my iPad in a good place snap my photo, and now I have a good texture that I can use. And as you can see, the photo is now covering up the entire page. If I select the arrow tool, I can take this and pinch and zoom and, and resize it as I need it. I just want this to cover the part of the drawing that I'm gonna be using. So that looks good. Once it's in a good position, I'm just gonna tap the arrow tool again, and now it's set. What I want to happen is I want to be able to see my drawing through the newspaper photo that I took above it. So I'm gonna tap on my layers and I'm gonna to go to my layer modes. I'm gonna tap the letter N. N stands for normal in this case and it's gonna open up all my blending modes. The blending mode that I want here is multiply. What multiply lets it do is any kind of white disappears. Any blacks or grays stay behind. So we lose all that white and it adds just this nice texture over, over our entire drawing. Uh, as I look at this now, I'm thinking maybe I want to rotate it a little bit so my text isn't straight up and down. I can play with it a little bit, but in that layer area, it's also kind of dark. So I might change the transparency. So now I get some of that texture over the image, but I can see some other things too. So for now, for this exercise, let's, let's run with this. So my next step is to add a mask. Masks work like that masking tape I mentioned earlier. So anything I would cover with masking tape, which might be the outside area here, won't be visible. So I'm gonna tap on my layer and I'm gonna go down here to mask. It's one of the options here. I'm gonna tap on that. I have created a mask. Now you're gonna notice that mask icon is white. The important thing to remember about masks is anything on your mask that is white is visible. Anything that is black is invisible. So for example, I'm going to choose the color black. I'm going to make sure I am drawing on that mask and I'm just gonna start you know, painting and I'm gonna make my brush really big. And I could go in here and I could get rid of all of that just by uh, coming in here and painting away and manually creating that mask. And when I check on my layer preview, you can see that now there's the scribbles that I made are black. So the white area we can see through and the black area we cannot. I'm going to undo that because there is a quicker way to go about doing this. So the faster way to do this is to use the selection tool. To show how this method works, I'm gonna go back to my layers and I'm just gonna take that layer mask, slide to the right, and I'm gonna delete it for now. We're gonna bring the layer mask back, but for now I don't need it. So I'm going to select my layer two, and then I'm going to go to my selection tool in the upper left hand corner. I'm gonna select that. Down here there's freehand and automatic. Freehand lets me draw with my pencil my selection. I don't wanna do that, that's too slow. Automatic is probably the way to go. So I am on automatic. The easiest thing to select here would be the white area surrounding that. So since I'm on automatic, I'm just going to tap on the white area and I'm gonna make sure that I grab these two spaces in between his like leaf arms as well. And what I've just selected is the background. You can see it crops it out really well. I don't need the background. So one of these tools here is this little, I don't know, two arrows facing each other tool. Basically what that does is that flips our selection. So it will select the flower plant instead. So I'm gonna tap on that. Perfect, that is selected. So that is our selection. And then I'm gonna to go to my layers and you can see it here, there, on the white there are some stripe lines. That shows the area that you cannot paint in, the area that is not selected. Now I'm going to tap on my other layer, inserted image, and I'm gonna tap on it again, 
and I'm gonna go to my layer mask again, and this time when I create a mask, look what happens. That has just automatically created the perfect mask for me. And what it's done, when I tap on my arrow tool, you can see we can no longer see the newspaper on that white background area. Looks good, so I'm gonna go to my layers, and, and from here, I like to adjust a little bit. Now that I can see it better, I can see that I can still get some of that texture in there, but I can turn down the opacity so it's not quite as noticeable. So my next step is I wanna add some highlights and some shadows to this image. So let's go ahead and do that. I am going to go ahead and photograph two more sections. Hit my gear icon over here, take another photo, and let's find another piece of newspaper that we can use. That looks good. Get a lot of that texture in there, take a photo. Maybe uh, I'm gonna use this photo. And then I'm gonna take a second photo. And with that, that'll give me another one for my highlights. So one of these is gonna be shadows, one of these is gonna be highlights. I'm gonna say yes, use that photo. Then I am done with the newspaper. Be gone. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our layers again. And I'm just gonna to toggle uh, the top one off for now. And the bottom one is gonna be our shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the letter N, which brings up our, our opacity and our blend modes. Now, since this layer is gonna be shadows, I'm going to tap on darken because I want to use the darker area of this. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use color burn. Oh yeah, so, so color burn darkens this nicely for me. I want it to be even darker. So one of the things I can do with this layer selected is I can go up to my adjustments and I can come down to hue, saturation, and brightness. And from there, I can actually make that darker and I can take out some of the color if I want to, desaturate it a little bit. Uh, this is really dark, but this is gonna work well because I can always change the opacity. So once that looks good, I'll tap on that wand again. And now I'm going to add a mask to this layer because I want this to only show up where I draw a shadow. So now I'm gonna tap on the layer, I'm gonna tap on mask, I've created my mask, and I don't want any of it to be visible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, use my color fill shape thing. Color fills work on masks as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drag black on there, and now it is, we look at the mask, it's black, which means you can't see anything through it. So now everywhere, I'm gonna grab the color white, everywhere where I draw with the color white, you're gonna see that, and color a little more here, you're gonna see that newspaper coming through. So this is gonna make a really good shadow for what I wanna do. So now I can kind of zoom in to whatever area I want. I'm gonna shrink my brush down a little bit so I can be a little more specific with my shadows. And I can come in here and I can draw my shadows. And this is gonna work really nicely for me. And this is counterintuitive a little bit because you're drawing with a white pencil, uh, but it, it does make sense. And then if I want to, I can make these shapes and I could drag my white in there and fill it up like that. And I'm just gonna come up here, I'm gonna add a shadow under this leaf and I'm gonna add some shadows, so I'm just gonna forward through the video really quickly. There we go, it is pretty sloppy, but I think this gets the idea across of, of what I'm going for here. So in some places, this is really too dark. So I'm gonna open up my layers, I'm gonna tap on the inserted image, and I'm gonna go back to my opacity, and now I can turn it down to where I need it to be. So now they look like pretty good shadows. Uh, and in some places, on the darker colors, like the green and under his lip and on the teeth, I think it looks really good. On the back stem, I think it's a little too much, right? It's it's not exactly what I wanted. There's something else we can do with masks. I've talked before about how if you color with white, you can see through the mask and wherever there's black, you can't. What if there's shades of gray? So if I think on the back of his little spine there, it's too much, I can turn this to gray and I can go in there and I can color this in with gray and the gray is only gonna show part of that color coming through. So if it's a darker gray, it's gonna show more. If it's a lighter gray, it's gonna show less. So I think that's probably a little too dark of a gray, so I'm gonna move it up to a lighter gray and go back in here. That's probably too light. See, it's just kind of a trial and error thing. There we go. 
and now I can come in here and I could just go in and I can lighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna lighten it up a little more. I'm being pickier than I should be, but you get the idea. You can come in here with different shades of gray and get different effects going on here. I'm gonna get here a little bit more. That should work for now. Now the next step is we wanna come in and we wanna add some highlights. So we have that newspaper layer that's gonna let us do that. So in my layers, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that newspaper on. I'm gonna tap it and I'm gonna tap the letter N to bring up our blend modes. I want it to lighten. Now I could go to the lighten section and play with some of these, but the thing I'm probably gonna use and I like the most is overlay. So if I tap on contrast, I have an option for overlay and that makes everything a little bit lighter. That is exactly what I am going for. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to tap on that layer. I'm going to create a mask and then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna drag it on my mask. So now it's completely invisible and now I can grab some white, make sure I'm on the layer mask and I can just jump in here and I can add highlights where I wanna add them. So if there's a little bit of light shining on his head, I can do that there on his lip. I can make that a little bit lighter. And the other thing I can do is if I'm not getting enough lightness here, so I can always open my layers, tap on that image and do what I did with the background. I can come in here with my hue, saturation, brightness and actually make that brighter. Uh, the one thing is, is I do have to be careful because I do start to lose some of my newsprint texture that I'm going for, but I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go back and now I'll just kind of fast forward through this whole thing, adding highlights where, where I need to. So there we have it. I might go in here actually and change the opacity a little bit, maybe bring it down to about 50%, 60% somewhere in there. But that's how I go about it. I like playing around with blend modes. I like playing around with the opacity and, and finding just the right thing. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And don't forget about those coupon codes for my Mastering Procreate class down in the description. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in a couple of days.